Hey there, and welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about one of the coolest companies from the early days of role-playing games, Judges Guild. We hope you'll like it. Okay, so today we're going to discuss a piece of early D&D history with a look at the most prolific publisher of D&D adventures and supplements in the late 70s. It might surprise you to know it isn't TSR. Stick around and enjoy the history of one of the most important early companies in the development of Dungeons & Dragons, Judges Guild. I'm AZ Mountaineer and this is our channel, Old School Rules, where we celebrate the community of old school gamers and grognards who knew what kobolds were when that wasn't cool. If you like what we're doing, please take a moment and give us a comment down below, a thumbs up, or feel free to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with new video content. Judges Guild was perhaps the most influential and certainly most prolific producer of Dungeons & Dragons campaign supplements from 1976 to 1979 when TSR finally realized that gamers were enthusiastically acquiring adventures and other supplements as fast as they could be turned out. But before we get to the exciting part of the story, we have to rewind a couple of years back to where it all began. In 1974, Bill Owen traveled to Gen Con 7 there, he picked up a copy of the original D&D wood grain box set. He returned home and ran a game for some of his fellow war gamers in Decatur, Illinois. By all accounts, it wasn't a great success, but one of the players was Bob Bledsoe, who asked if he could borrow the books, and soon Decatur had a popular, regular group of gamers enjoying this new role-playing hobby. Bob Bledsoe was already pouring his energy into his Dungeons & Dragons campaign, including a central hub called the City State of the Invincible Overlord. When General Electric closed the plant where he worked at the end of 1975, presented with an unexpected opportunity, Bledsoe began to consider forming his own gaming company. The first effort of Bledsoe and Owen was unsuccessful, a game of their own creation called Martian America. After that, Owen began work on a Civil War war game but Bledsoe continued to work on his expansive D&D campaign. In 1976, the pair traveled to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin to meet with the staff of TSR, the owners of Dungeons & Dragons. Owen's pitch of his Civil War war game was not successful, but TSR agreed that Bledsoe and his company could produce supplements for D&D. The folks at TSR purportedly saw no market for anything but official rules, and told Bledsaw he would be wasting his time and money. After their meetings, Owen told Bledsaw he would join his new company. And on July 4th, 1976, Bob and Bill founded their new company, Judges Guild. Bill and Bob came up with a unique concept, selling their work by subscription and targeting the judges, or dungeon masters as they came to be called. In order to kickstart their efforts, they decided they needed a tangible product. And they would produce copies of the map of Bob's City State of the Invincible Overlord. Bill attended the 1976 Gen Con 9 and sold copies of the map to interested gamers. They didn't even have an official booth that first year, just a card table and a trip to the nearby alley to retrieve a copy of the map from the trunk of Bill's Mustang whenever he made a sale. From there, they started selling subscriptions to their bi-monthly mailings. 1976 saw Bledsoe continue to turn out maps and outlines of sections of the city-state, dungeon levels, reference sheets, and charts, while Bill Owen created his popular TAC cards, two-sided cards with quick reference to stats for use in playing D&D. By the end of the year, the folks at TSR decided that the supplement business was not a waste of time, and they contacted Judges Guild to negotiate royalties to use the Dungeons & Dragons name in their product. This proved mutually beneficial as the D&D brand was well known and helped promote Judges Guild's products and D&D started receiving a nice source of additional income. By the following year, the idea had taken off and the two decided they needed to be dedicated to the business full time with more people to follow. In 1977, Judges Guild continued with their subscription model, sending periodic mailings that included a journal, reference information, and maps. 
Supplement L included Bledsoe's famous haunted house adventure, Teagle Manor, followed by Supplement M, which included a port city adventure in the town of Modron. Scales, sales skyrocketed, with Bill Owen estimating the revenues that year would be nearly $1 million in today's money. Throughout the year, Judges Guild continued to produce generic supplements, hex sheets, Judges Shields, Chronicle cards and reference books, as well as the large booklet, Dave Arneson's First Fantasy Campaign, careful not to include anything that had been previously published by TSR, as well as Bob Bledsoe's wider campaign world around the city-state of the Invincible Overlord called Wilderlands of High Fantasy. They also settled on a printing format for the officially licensed D&D products and re-released Modron at the end of that year. The business remained incredibly busy, and by the spring of 1978, Bill Owen was ready to move on from 70-plus hour weeks, and he agreed to sell his interest in the company to Bob. Judges Guild moved to a new location to support its increasing size. Throughout 1978, Judges Guild turned out bi-monthly subscriptions, including the journal, four more D&D adventures, a number of supplements, including a revised city-state, and the next area of the campaign world, the Fantastic Wooderlands Beyond. In addition to their own products, Judges Guild was also selling TSR's games and other role-playing games, dice, and back issues of role-playing magazines. In 1978, TSR recognized the amount of interest and revenue the supplemental products had generated, and TSR began to publish its own adventures. Although Judges Guild's Bob Bledsoe understood TSR had granted him the exclusive right to publish adventures and supplements, rather than argue with TSR, he decided to follow their lead and increase the number of adventures being published by the Judges Guild. In 1979, Judges Guild tripled the number of D&D adventures, published their first four AD&D adventures, and their subscription and journal went to a monthly publication schedule. With the focus shifted to adventures, the number of supplements slowed, but they still turned out the third area of the city-state's home campaign world, Wilderlands of the Magic Realm, and a few other supplements. That year, they also took over publication of the Dungeoneer fanzine, starting with issue number nine. 1980 was the final year of Judges Guild's license for Dungeons & Dragons. They produced one adventure, the next campaign world product, Wilderlands of the Fantastic Reaches, and two supplements. For Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, they produced four adventures. They also published a few generic supplements as well as the new urban environment, the city-state of the World Emperor. Their journal and the Dungeon Dungeoneer started the year as separate publications, but in August and September issue, they combined the two magazines into one, the Dungeoneer Journal. By the end of 1981, Judges Guild's license for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons had also come to an end. While they published nine AD&D adventures, by later that year they had transitioned over to publishing universal campaign material and produced an equal number of adventures without the AD&D trademark. That year saw the last issue of the Dungeoneer Journal, which was replaced by a new periodical called Pegasus, sent to subscribers beginning with the April and May issue. In addition to their focus on D&D &D and Universal Fantasy products, in the 1980s, Judges Guild also started increasing their focus on products for other systems, putting out products for games such as Traveler, RuneQuest, Tunnels and Trolls, Dragon Quest, Empire of the Petal Throne, Chivalry and Sorcery, Superhero, and Villains and Vigilantes. With all of that, by 1982, the incredible journey had passed its peak and things were beginning to slow. While they turned out 11 supplements and adventures as part of their universal fantasy line and maintained publication of their bi-monthly magazine, by the end of the year, it was obvious that things were coming to a close. In 1983, one last fantasy project, product was published, Tarantus, another city setting for Bledsoe's campaign world. They also put out two issues of Pegasus before the company's last employees had gone, and after months of no new products and no real activity, 
the business finally closed its doors. In many ways, Judges Guild was a victim of its own incredible success. They had recognized and tapped into the clear desire of fantasy gamers for professional products. And as a result, the market responded and many more companies followed the trail Judges Guild had blazed. Soon, Judges Guild innovative products began to look dated and they lacked the market strength to keep their products in front of players who increasingly could buy similar products and more professional packaging directly from the company that published their favorite game. Judges Guild's newsprint paper and tri-collar printing no longer gained the attention of players as other options came to dominate the market share and hobby store shelf space. Over its seven years, Judges Guild produced nearly 90 fantasy products aimed at those playing Dungeons and Dragons and three dozen products for other systems. In addition, it published just shy of 50 periodicals, evolving the journal from a folded legal sized piece of paper to 16 page newspaper format, and then a 32, 48, and 64 page magazine, as well as a 64 page Dungeoneer magazine. And finally, combining those into the new publication, a 96 page monthly in the form of Pegasus. Along the way, Judges Guild did a lot to advance the new hobby of role playing games. Bob Bledsoe shared his thoughts about the company's important achievements in an editorial published by Dragon Magazine in 1979, providing ready reference charts to help young referees find the rules they need, aids that help judges more quickly build and populate their campaigns, a change in focus from the dungeon to the wilderness and city settings as equally viable and enjoyable places for role playing, a shift in focus from a judge who is aligned against his or her players to one with the spirit of cooperation in the fun, providing more information to players so they could bear more responsibility in gaming sessions, and sharing thoughts from his own campaign and that of other authors. In that way, Judges Guild helped a generation of hobbyists connect, share ideas, rules, and approach to gaming. If you've never heard of Judges Guild before today, I hope this video inspires you to learn more about them and to enjoy some of their amazing old school products. I've included information about two books that provide great information. Judges Guild's Bob and Bill is written by one of the original partners, Bill Owen, and contains his recollection and a great collection of photographs, documents, articles, notes, and more from his time with the company. Designers and Dragons is a four volume comprehensive history of role playing games with lots of great information on Judges Guild and many, many other companies. Both of these books are available, and I encourage you to pick up a copy if you want to read more about the history of Judges Guild. In addition, the Akiem website contains a wealth of information, including written accounts from both Bob Bledsoe and Bill Owen. I've also included a list of products here at the end as a reference. Uh, apologies in advance for any errors or omissions. I'm looking forward to more in-depth discussions of some of the amazing works created by this important company from the early days of role playing. And until next time, my friends, keep rolling 20s.